recording is started. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the book of Ruth. Before we could start a class, can I request one of us to lead us in prayer, please? Leah Laba, can you lead us in prayer? Somebody who haven't prayed before. Mm, Georgia Hamilton. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Yes. God, as we come before you this morning, we just want to thank you for carrying us today. Thank you, God, for guiding us and protecting us, mighty Father. Lord God, I yes. ask, Lord God, that you will carry us through this session this morning, mighty Father. Mighty Father, cover our lecture this morning, mighty Father. I pray, Lord God, that the information will impact us, mighty Father. It will be clear, it will be concise, and God, we will understand, mighty God. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Let me project the notes. So today we're going to study on the book of Ruth. We can look at the background a little later. We will look at the author. The author of this book is unknown. Uh, we see that the Jewish tradition in the Talmud has accepted Samuel as the author of the book of Ruth. And we also see the date. It is written between 1011 and 931 BC. And the very purpose of this book was, you know, uh, to know the genealogy, uh, genealogy of Jesus. How did he come from? Uh, from uh, Ruth has been the um, great grandmother uh, to David, and from the David, how the genealogy of Jesus comes. And we also see the second purpose of, you know. Um, uh, God's providence and uh, how God has been loyal to his people, to those who seek. Uh, we see that in this book. And also to summarize all these three points, we see that to give the insight into the spiritual side of life uh, in the time of judges, there was godly remnant that remained true to the law of God. And also we see, as I said, the genealogy of David, through his grandmother, Ruth, who was a Moabite, and to show that the Gentile could believe in God and become a Jew. And uh, three of the four women in Christ's genealogy, we read that in the book of Matthew, was Tama, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, was there. And the unique features we see in this book is Ruth provides a marvelous illustration of redemption. The law made provision for the women uh, who, due to the death of their husband, were left without an heir and faced with the loss of their property. And uh, both of them were secured by a close relative of a kinsman redeemer. So in the same way, we see like how Jesus redeemed us it actually illustrates about jesus redeeming israel and the key verses uh, are listed here is a root chapter 1, 1 15 to 16 and chapter 4 verse 10 some of the key words if you are doing a word study we can do on kinsman and kin and redeem and rest and some of the qualifications of a kinsman redeemer we see in the book of Deuteronomy, we'll read in detail when we are going through the notes that uh, must be from the blood relative to those who redeem, must be able to redeem, must be willing uh, to buy back any fortified inheritance, example, the land to be prepared to marry the widow, must affect it by meeting the just demands of the law. And a few of the Hebrew names and its 
meaning it's like elimelech means my god is my king naomi means pleasant sweet or favor bethlehem means house of bread mahlon joy or song kilion ornament or perfectness mara means bitterness or parmen's skull root rest or satisfied boaz strength and we also see the portrayal of jesus christ in this book as a kinsman redeemer towards israel and yeah some of the themes and outline that we can see in this book when we're doing a study there's also a comparison with the book of genesis uh, to the book of ruth and also from esther to ruth uh genesis we see genesis like ruth uh, contains uh, examples of god's providence what a first seems to be the coincidence often turns out to god's plan like we see in the in the life of joseph how god turned joseph hardship and blessed him uh, in the land of egypt same way ruth when she entered bethlehem along with the mother in law the hardship that she faced turns out to be a blessing later and uh, even in the book of esther we see that ruth was a gentile who lived among the jews and we see esther was a jew but who lived among the gentiles and uh, ruth married a jew and esther being a jew she married a gentile both ruth and esther had relatives to obey uh, and both were rewarded for their obedience we also see uh, the book of ruth contains evidence of god's providence overruling the coincidence of life so one second i'll just accept something okay we'll uh, we'll see uh, the uh, shadow of christ in this book of ruth is the kinsman redeemer is important for us to portray the work of Christ what he did for us to redeem Israel to redeem us by paying a price by becoming uh, the redemption um, he was willing to redeem we see that uh, Jesus was not forced to the cross but then uh, he paid his price willingly he sacrificed himself willingly uh, uh, to you know uh, to redeem us to redeem Israel from this well to redeem each one of us um we see that in the new testament so with this we will move on to the book of ruth i'll just share the presentation the class and keep our bibles ready as well so uh, who was the audience that this book was written to we see the audience was the jewish people this book was returned to them like during the time of david's reign as a king uh, the audience were familiar with david but they didn't know his background his family background uh, beyond his father jesse so uh, you know samuel um, i mean the tradition says samuel the author of this book had to write down to uh, to let us know the background of david the lineage of david so that we can also see how god orchestrates from david the lineage comes to the divine plan jesus let's look at the history the background of this book but for that i'll just accept a few members who have joined it okay <clears throat> just clearing the truth okay let's look at the history the background of this uh <clears throat> events during this time of judges in israel probably in the 12th century bc perhaps 50 to 100 years before the birth of david it was a time of great instability and 
trouble in Israel with everyone doing what was right in their own eyes. And we studied on the book of Judges yesterday and uh, yesterday that people uh, forgot their God, forgot the new generation especially, forgot who God was and how God rescued them from from Egypt and from the slavery and bondage and they started <clears throat> doing what was right in their own eyes by mingling with the pagan gods and the pagan culture they started inculcating in their life so the book of Ruth is one of the Bible's shortest book telling us the story in just four chapters and its main feature is the Moabite women named Ruth who married an Israelite family Eventually, she gets converted to Judaism. We'll be, we will see to it later. And she becomes a great grandmother of King David and ends an ancestor of the Messiah. Now, let's look at uh, Ruth's background. She's from a mobile background. So the mobile, uh, let, uh, let me uh, just give you a little bit about the tribe. How did this how did this Mobite tribe start? Mobite, uh, Mo Mobites were a tribe of people who descended from Moab, one of the sons of Lot. As we, uh, in the book of Genesis, when we study, we see that Genesis, <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, we see that Lot lost his wife during uh, when he was coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, he, he landed up coming only with his two daughters and the two daughters thought they will not have any generation so what they did is uh, <clears throat> they uh, they uh, they gave drink to their father and through their father they got two sons and one of the son the firstborn was named as Moab meaning from the father from the father so despite the strange nature of moab's birth and uh, the development of his people the history records many important insights regarding his legacy especially in this book because ruth is from the tribe of moab we also studied about the moab tribe uh, you know when we were studying on the book of uh, Deuteronomy when uh, and uh, book of Deuteronomy or book of Joshua I think it's book of Joshua when the uh, when the uh, uh, when the Israelites were passing through the wilderness there was a king who was scared of the size of this uh, uh, Israelite so he start he 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 he, he sought the soothsayer or the uh, he, he recommended Balak to curse on the Israelites. We see the Moabite king who did that. But here we come to the story of the book of Ruth, who is from the Moabite tribe and how she accepts God as a personal uh, uh, God along with her mother-in-law. And uh, some of the strengths of Ruth, I would like to point out here, even before we could start the story, the strength of Ruth was a kindness and loyalty uh, that didn't come suddenly but then I guess this was there within her as she grew that's why we see that being permeated as Ruth's character and we also see as a woman she had the integrity and she also maintained a high value in dealing with uh, you know Boaz uh, uh, Boaz and uh, she was also very hard working in the field um, gathering the leftover grains to um, uh, to uh, you know to provide for a mother-in-law and herself and finally we see Ruth's deep love for a mother-in-law to take care of her with this kind of uh, a person we will enter the story so that we would know uh, exactly how Ruth was handling the whole situation so what happened is in the book of Ruth chapter 1, let's turn to our Bibles, Ruth chapter 1. Everyone take up Ruth chapter 1. So during a time of famine, a man named Elimelech 
took his wife Naomi and two sons. They had two sons named Mahlon and and Kilion, and moved towards east from Bethlehem to a place called Moab. A move of desperation, given them the long, uh, you know, there was an enmity already between the Israel and Moabites. But then he thought there may be some prospect to get some work for their sons in Moabite greater because, um, you know, in Israel, they were undergoing some famine. So with that intention, this family moves to the land of Moab. But we do not know whether uh, their sons found a work but the sons, both the sons, found a wife in Moab. Mahalon married Ruth and Kilion married Orpa. So within 10 years, they experienced both um, social and economic tragedy in that land. And this landed up to the death of all the men, all the three men. Elimelech, Malon, and Kilion died, passed away in that land, leaving Naomi and the two daughters, I mean, two daughter-in-law without husband. So we have three widows there who needed uh, need to be supported for themselves. And um, uh, they didn't have any uh, legal rights in that land. And, uh, you know, there were no men in the land to support them. And in short, they were like, you know, uh, they didn't have a land, no resources with which they can make their living. So here uh, we see in chapter 1, verse 20, you know, we see the uh, Naomi lamenting. Naomi lamenting, saying that, can one of us please read? You all can unmute and read. But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. So do not call me Naomi, but call me Mara. Don't call me pleasant or sweet. I'm no more that. I've become bitter. I've become bitter. And because of which God has dealt bitterly with me. Because they had lost the protection, they lost the support of their husband, and they were easily targeted uh, for the economic and social abuse and exploitation in that place. And they became the aliens in the land of Moab now. Perhaps in response to the vulnerability they had to face in that land, as an alien. So uh, uh, Naomi hears now. Naomi is hearing that Bethlehem, Israel is doing well. They've overcome the famine and everything is fine. So Naomi decides to return back to her home. And she's urging, and she urged her daughter-in-laws to go back to their parents' place, to a maternal home. And she also prayed God that the God of Israel would grant each of them security with their household. And she urges both of them. With much dispute, Orpa, a second daughter-in-law, accepts a mother-in-law's wish. And she left her, left back to her place weeping. But yet, Ruth, being the first daughter-in-law, she refuses to be separated from Naomi no matter what the hardship could be. Her words to Naomi, you know, shows the love and loyalty that she carried for her. We see that in uh, verse 16 to 17. Can one of us read chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, please? And she but Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. 
17. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. So uh, look at this remarkable statement that Ruth is making to her mother-in-law. Though she's from a, a you know, pagan background, but here she's ready. You know, she's ready to become a Jew by choice. She's ready to accept, uh, you know, accept God as a God. And I will go with you where you go. And I'll accept your people as my people. I'll accept your God as my God. And I will die where you die. That easy for a girl to step out when she has a, a future in the place where she's staying. It's very risky and it is not that easy, but she chooses to do that, not ready to leave a, 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 a Naomi, a, a, a aged mother in law alone. She goes to support her, to provide for her, to be with her. But instead of putting it that way, she says, I want to come. I accept your people as my people, your God as my God, a new family altogether. And she's ready for any kind of hardship. And she moves with her to Bethlehem, to Israel. Now, Naomi and Ruth face, when they come to a new place, yes, there would be an hardship. But when we trust in God, Hardship is not a hopeless situation anymore. Although we encounter, even in our personal life, when we encounter, uh, uh, you know, any hardship, but when we have the hope and trust on God, he gives us the strength to overcome that. In the story of Ruth, we don't see a uh, you know, very obvious miracle or a miraculous intervention, but Throughout the story, when we read, we see the hand of God leading by no means. You know, uh, he's leading her throughout and he's orchestrating everything for Ruth. We see every moment looks like God was at work. And he was faithful in providing, uh, you know, the uh, in providing the food and shelter and also uh, making Ruth's life beautiful, meaningful, because she trusted on the God of Israel and she has stepped out in faith. We can also relate that with Abraham, how he stepped out in faith, not knowing where he's going, but he trusted on God and he stepped out in faith. Ruth also trusted on the God of Israel and she stepped out in faith. Today, God is asking you and me, can we have that kind of faith in us to step out so that we can experience the hand of God in our life? The God who is faithful with Ruth is the same God will be faithful with you and me. I see some comment. One second, please. Okay. The same God was faithful to you and me. So once they reached Bethlehem, Naomi and Ruth sought for food. So Naomi guides Ruth. There is a field out there. You can go and gather the, the leftover grains. It's one of the rule uh, in the Jewish tradition is was not to empty the field completely, but to leave out some grains for the poor people in the land. They would come and pick that grains. So it was not only Ruth, it was even some of the other Israelites who were poor in that land would go to the field to gather the grains for their living. So just like that, Ruth steps out. She gets this place. She goes to this field to Boaz. The kinsman was Boaz, but she, she does not know anything about her Boaz. She just goes obeying Naomi as per her guidance. She goes there to pick up the grains. We see God's providence there. We see that as God was with Ruth, 
Ruth found favor in in the eyes of Boaz. She found favor. He was a wealthy farmer. So Boaz was a relative to Ruth's husband who had died. According to the law of Moses, if a man died without children, his nearest relative must marry his wife and raise up her children. We see that in Deuteronomy 25. Can one of us please turn to Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 onwards? I'll just tell you till where. Can one of us please turn to Deuteronomy 25? Can somebody else read other than Rosalind? 5 to 10. We can read verse 5 to 10. Deuteronomy. Twenty-five verses five to ten. Yeah. If brothers dwell together. Elisha, can you be a little louder, please? Okay. Deuteronomy twenty-five verses five to ten. Yeah. If brothers dwell to, I'm uh, reading from the English Standard Version. Okay. If brothers dwell together, and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead man shall not be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in to her and take her as his wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And the first son whom she bears shall succeed to the name of his dead brother, and his name may not be bloated out of Israel. And if a man does not wish to take his brother's wife, and his brother's wife shall go up to the gates to the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to perpetuate his brother's name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of a husband's brother to me. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak to him. And if he persists, saying, I do not wish to take her, then his brother's wife shall go out to him in the presence of the elders and pull his sandals off his foot and spit in his face. And she shall answer and say, So shall it be done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. And the name of his house shall be called in Israel, the house of him who had his sandals pulled off. So this is the tradition that has been followed here. So we see that, uh, you know, Boaz offered Ruth the protection and the food. When Ruth looked at his kindness and generosity of Boaz, she was surprised. So she, ha she asked him, why? For I am a foreigner in this land. In fact, you know, uh, we see that, you know, Ruth giving her the extra grains and, you know, a lot of favor upon her. And Ruth was surprised with this action. And we see in, in the book of Ruth, can we turn to book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Can we read? Can someone else Anita Govekar? Yes, sir. And Boyaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and have, how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. Well, it was... And the Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Yeah. So here we see <clears throat> how Boaz had learned of Ruth's faithfulness to her uh, mother-in-law and he prayed that the God of Israel would bless Ruth for her loyalty. 
and uh, later part we see how Naomi forces uh, 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 Ruth to marry Boaz by invoking uh, the kinship with him because Ruth was not aware of the tradition but here Naomi explains about the tradition and she tries to bring them both together. She sent Ruth to Boaz at one night uh, with the tradition how she needs to offer herself to him on that one particular night when they have some kind of celebration. But the upright, uh, but we also see Boaz being a very righteous man, fear of God. He refuses to take that as an advantage over Ruth. But instead we see him trying to do right things in a right way to get Ruth, uh, to get married to Ruth. So, you know, uh, uh, according to their uh, rituals and uh, uh, inheritance, as what we just read in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Boaz, you know, announces to the elders and all the people. We see that in chapter 4. Can we turn to chapter 4? Verse 9 to 10. So Boaz, uh, he, he tries to redeem Ruth in the right way by whatever the ritual needs to be followed of buying the land or exchange of anything. So he, uh, we read in uh, verse 9. Can one of you all please read 9 and 10, please? One of us, can we please read 9 and 10? Ruth chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And the Boaz said unto the headers, and unto all the people, Ye are witness these days, that I have bought all the that was Elimelech, and that was Shilion and the Melion of the land of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabite, the wife of the Melon, have I put a process to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the Lord, the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witness this days. Amen. 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 So we see in this way. Boaz helped Naomi and he marries Ruth by rescuing her from the sad life of a widowhood in the ancient times. It was not easy for a woman to live alone. And especially if she's a widow, people take advantage of her vulnerability. But praise God, like how Boaz was ready you know, but he was, uh, he was, a, uh, he was a man who feared God and you know he he wanted to uh, he wanted to be a blessing so he helped naomi and he marries ruth in the right way as per the tradition so then uh, we see in the same chapter 4 16 and 17 can one of us please read 16 and 17 Uh, Ruth chapter 4, 16 and 17. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Also the neighbor women gave him a name saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Yes. We see because uh, Boaz did the right thing, he also found favor in God's eye. Ruth and Boaz were orchestrated by God himself. We see the hand of God on both of their lives. And we see how God blessed them. God blessed them with a child. Because, you know, uh, childbearing was an honor for the women in those days. So as soon as they were married, God blessed them. Ruth with a child, Ruth and Boaz with a son, and they named him Obed. God was the father and Obed was the father. Later in the book we see Obed was the father of Jesse and Jesse was the father of David. 
who was anointed by God to become the king of Israel. We will, we will read to it in the first book of Samuel. And Jesus was a descendant of David. We read that in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. And we see how God orchestrates everything. He brings the lineage of David, lineage of David to the birth of Jesus. Yes, it took many centuries to put this in place, but the result is God's plan of salvation, which was at the very beginning, was fulfilled. We see how God is fulfilling that throughout the book. He is mindful of God, uh, you know, of the salvation of us to bring out Jesus into this world who will become our Redeemer. And in the story, we see that Ruth plays a very key role in uh, coming of the promised Messiah. And Ruth becomes one of Jesus' Gentile ancestors, showed us that Christ came to save all people. We see that God being so kind to everyone, he is the God of everyone, not only Jew, but even of the Gentiles. That's what we also see in the New Testament when the apostles were very keen on preaching the gospel to only to the uh, uh, to the Jews. But later the Holy Spirit opened up doors with the Gentiles because God is for everyone. This redemption, the, uh, the Jesus paid the price for everyone in this world. Whoever believes in him will be saved. So this is what we see, like how God was so merciful and kind on, uh, on uh, you know, on Ruth and he blessed her. He made her faithful. Throughout the book, we see, uh, um, we see uh, the key theme that is the faithfulness. How Ruth was faithful to Naomi and also Naomi being faithful to Ruth. Because of it, uh, you know, she uh, uh, she refers Boaz and she says he's the kinsman. And later part, we also see Boaz being faithful to Ruth. And overall in the story, we see the faithfulness of God towards everyone. Though Ruth was married for 10 years before, but she didn't bear any child. But now after, the, uh, after she gets married to Boaz, immediately God opens her womb and blesses her with a son. You see, there was a God's plan on Ruth's life. In the similar way in our life, we see something been delayed. We see many hardship in our life when we trust on God, friends. Be assured that God is faithful. God is faithful. May, we may not know the complete picture of his plan, but God is faithful. As per Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has a plan for us, plan to prosper us. If he's asking us to wait, when we wait on God, the waiting period is not a wasted. Waiting on God is not a wasted time. God will bless us. He will reward us with much greater blessing. We read that in Ephesians 3.20. Whenever God blesses, he blesses us abundantly, exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond what we could think or imagine. Along with the faithfulness, we also see the kindness towards each other. That is the God's character. God is a God of kindness and mercy. Is full of love. And we see that that's how God handles us. If God can change Ruth's life and make it fruitful and bless her with a good future, today God is looking at each one of us and telling us that I will bless you and make your, uh, give you a good future. Give you the honor for your shame. And uh, give you the protection when you're insecure. God is, God is that. When we look up to God, when we uh, uh, cling ourselves to God, just like how Ruth did, we need to cling ourselves. When we, when we cling ourselves to God, we see God's faithfulness, kindness, protection, and the blessing, overall blessing of Abraham upon each of us. 
finally we see the redemption is the underlining theme in this book of Ruth. As Boaz was the kinsman redeemer and saves Ruth from the hopeless situation, the same way Jesus has been illustrated as the kinsman redeemer in our life. Jesus is our redeemer. So with this, I'll open to the class to our learning. What did we learn from this book of Ruth? What are the life lessons that we can carry from this book of Ruth? Ma'am, can I? Yes, please. Yeah, um, we can trust God in our times of hardship. Mm -hmm. the life when we have like ups and downs. Yes. We can trust God like Ruth. Yes. Yes. Trusting God at all times. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I share? Yes, Divya. Yeah, um, one thing uh, is like God can change any worst situations of our life into good. He has the power to do it. Only, only he, he can do it. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Anyone else? Okay. Anyone else? One more person. What was the learning from this book? Okay, some of the things that I would like to recollect and reiterate is humility was the wise attitude that, you know, uh, Ruth showed in this book. She humbled herself by, you know, leaving her household and choosing Naomi. And she also trusted Naomi's God and she moved in. That was really nice. And we also see, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ruth making the right choices in her life. Uh, she she made the right choice at the right time. And we also see that even though there was hardship, she never looked back. She never looked back, but she uh, endured in the choices that she made. And maybe one of the reason of uh, God blessing her was towards her, uh, towards her endurance, you know, pursuing with good motto, good attitude, she carried her life. <laughs> And we also see God's providence was a wonderful thing here. And in the end of the book, we see how Ruth experienced the loving kindness of Boaz in her life, which she would have never imagined that, you know, uh, somebody can give, a, give meaning to her life and make her life fruitful. She would have never imagined that she would give birth to a son and, uh, you know, she would have never thought, uh, but a um, faithfulness towards God made her uh, made her to come under the lineage of Jesus. So God, we see God is a God of not partial. God is the same for everyone, and that's how God has chosen Ruth. If some of us may think that we are not from. Uh, a proper background or when we look back at a life at the sinful life what we go through but the minute we uh, we repent and we turn back and we receive jesus as a lord and savior god again says there's no partiality you are in my home you are in my you know my lineage you are with me you know uh, the uh, we have the same relationship with God as a heavenly father. So there's, uh, you know, uh, there's love of God is the same for all of us, uh, despite our background, despite of, uh, you know, uh, what type of background we come from, but God is a God of us. This is something that I personally learned from this story.
Okay, uh, before we could end this class, can one of us please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us, uh, Father, through uh, your word, uh, helping our pastor, Lord, to explain, uh, Father, to delve deep into, uh, uh, Lord, what made Ruth special, what made, uh, Lord, her life turn into, uh, Father, a miracle, Father, Lord. Every, um, yes, Lord, your faithfulness, Lord, your uh, redemption, Lord, we uh, see through, uh, Lord, in uh, Ruth's life, Father, Lord. We, uh, we also know, Lord, as we trust in you, Lord, as we make the right choices, as we humble ourselves and surrender ourselves to you, Father, Lord, endure uh father even through the hardships father you are a god who can change lord all our mm, uh, bad experiences uh father lord all the lost time all the uh, Father, harm that has been done. Lord, you are the God who can redeem it, Father, Lord. You are the God who can restore, Father, Lord. Thank you that Jesus Christ is our kinsman, redeemer. Yes, yes, Father, yes. Lord. Thank you, Father. We cling on to you. Yes, Father, we uh, uh, Lord, hold on to every word, Father, that all that you are, yes, Father, all that you are brings life to us, Father, Lord. So help us trust in you, Lord, depend upon you. And just like we learn from Ruth, Father, Lord, you help us, Lord, walk uh, in humility and surrender to you all the days of our life, Father. Bless uh, Pastor uh, Diana, Father Lord, thank you, Lord, that you spoke through her, Lord. Uh, continue, Lord, to use her mightily for your kingdom. I pray for every student, Father Lord, uh, let the words that have been imparted to us, Father Lord, let it become, uh, Father uh, uh, Lord, let it uh, help us in our sanctification to be sanctified father lord uh, let us be sanctified by your word and the holy spirit lord in all these things we pray in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen 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 thank you so much for joining in today's session see you all tomorrow god bless bye thank you ma'am